Thanks for joining us. We're uh, joined now with by uh, Scotty Hazelton, the first year defensive coordinator here at Nevada. And Coach, you, you come most recently from USC, but uh, I think the more accurate description of your background, you're more of a small, small college guy. Uh, North Dakota State, you played at Fort Lewis College. Talk a little bit about your playing experience and your coaching experience coming up through the ranks. You know, uh, I did. I played at a Division II school down in Colorado. Um, great experience for me. You know, I uh, had an opportunity to play early, and uh, I got hurt uh, as a sophomore and a junior, so my career got cut short, and that's kind of how I got into coaching. You know, I was around a uh, – a uh, guy who was a mentor to me, Gus Bradley, who's uh, now a head coach with Jacksonville. And uh, he kind of got me into coaching and kind of kind of founded my way through, and I kind of base a lot of things that I do off of him. You had some stops along the way, but kind of made your mark up there at North Dakota State. You won a uh, Division I AA national championship a couple years ago. What was that experience like? You know, it was great. You know, we just had a great group of kids that uh, worked really hard. And, uh, you know, we they they had an attitude a lot like they have that we have here is uh, they're hardworking guys. You know, maybe they weren't recruited by the biggest schools in the whole world, but we had an opportunity to take them and kind of build them into who they became. And you know, through hard work and the tradition of hard work at a place, you know, really helps you uh, really helps you grow as as a, as a football team. You you go from North Dakota State down to, to USC and then and then up here at Nevada. So so in three years you've kind of seen the gamut of of different levels of football. What's that experience been like? Yeah, you know it's been great. Every place has uh, every place has great benefits to it. You know you, you look at it and you say okay when we were when we were up in North Dakota uh, it was is a great place to be. It was very important. Football was very important to the to the area. You know some of the people understand there. You know they they think it's so important they don't understand why you're leaving to go to SC. You know so it's 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 kind of funny. And then you go to SC and and, and it was a tremendous experience. You know to play at the Coliseum and do all those kind of things it was it was great. And uh, you know th there's there's some really talented athletes in the Pac-12 that you get to play against. And you know you know you got to look at things as a, as a family too though. You know if 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 my kids were really young or they were really old, you know maybe we'd still be there. But you know Reno was a great draw to us. You know as a family and you know the tradition of football here. You know. They, you know, eight straight bowl games. I mean, there's there's a lot of winning here, and, and, and it's been built, and they have tradition, and the guys work hard, and it, it was just a wonderful experience for me to try to get into. When you were at USC, you worked with uh, Monty Kiffin uh, on the defensive side of the ball, and and you know, obviously known for the Tampa two defense, which goes all the way back to the Steel Curtain days in, in Pittsburgh. Talk a little bit about kind of your defensive philosophy, how it's been molded, and and what you plan to kind of install here with the Wolfpack. You know, it's a uh, the Tampa two is kind of a it's kind of a system that's in place, and and you, and you don't really mess with it much. You know, it's it's been tweaked by some of the best coaches around, and and uh, you know, Monty was definitely one of those guys who uh, had some influence on us with that. Um, Gus Bradley runs the same thing. Uh, all those guys together are, are guys that had a lot of influence on me, and uh, you know, the Tampa two is really a defense that says, listen, let's not give up the big play. You know, somewhere along the line, if we can make a team go 14 plays they're going to stumble somewhere. Either they're going to get a penalty, they're going to mess up, or we're going to have an opportunity. You know, one of our guys, you know, because we do have some talented guys, they're going to get tackled for loss, or they're going to, they're going to make, we're going to make a big play on the flip side. And it just gives you an opportunity to say, okay, we need, just need to take advantage of those plays when they happen. And, uh, you know, really the bottom line of defense is not giving up points. And that's kind of, kind of what we do. Let's talk about this defense that you inherit here at Nevada and, and kind of as we get through spring ball and move into the offseason. Um, you have a defensive front that's got some experience under its belt and got a lot of pieces to work with there. And, and as you go through to the, to the linebackers in the secondary, you kind of lose some of that experience. But overall, what do you see out of this defense and, and the pieces you have to work with? You know, in our, in our system, there's really uh, three major points, one in each uh, position group. You know, the defensive line, the defensive line has, to be, has to be solid in any system that you run, but really it helps you. If, if, you, can, if you can rush the passer and you can stop the run, it really starts up front. And so that's really the most important key part in, in, any, in any defense, really. Um, but really, three technique is something that we take a lot of pride in. If, if you have a great three, our defensive tackle lines up over the guard, you know, usually the tight end side. Um, if that guy's a really dominant player, it helps us. It kind of cuts down runs that way. If they can't run the ball out there, then we can kind of design things because we know where they're going to run the ball. Um, with there, we have two guys, you know, Rakeem Yates and, and Jack Reynoso, who have been, you know, talented young men who have played quite a bit of football. And if we can keep them going, you know, our defensive ends, in, in our type of system, they need to be able to run a pass rush. And we have a couple guys that can do that, and we're bringing along some young guys, you know, like Brock Hackings, you know, pretty good pass rusher. And we got Lenny Jones, and then, you know, even if you go Papard and Hauk and those guys, they're, they're really coming along this year. And uh, setting them free has been good. And then you always need that guy in the middle that's going to 
you know, with Jordan Hansen, a guy like that, you know, he, he, she shuts down the middle. If he can clog up a couple gaps in there, it makes it easy for us because our backers are, you know, we're trying to go a little bit smaller with the linebackers. We're trying to go a little bit faster. And if we can eat up some blocks with those guys up front, it's great. Um, the, the, the next level at linebacker, uh, really it's a little bit different system that we've had in the past here. You know, you look at the guys who are going to the NFL and have opportunities off the team that we had last year, good players. All really big guys, you know. We're looking okay. Our middle linebacker is a guy who, who might be covering the middle, deep middle of the field. You know, he's going to be running, uh, and so you know, for us, it'd be okay. You know, like Jordan Dobridge and uh, Reggie Coates, guys like that. You know, they have some speed, they have some ability. You know, they have to be able to hit and lead us and kind of set the front and and make all the adjustments. But they also have to be athletic enough to run through the middle of the field. Um, the will linebacker spots more of a just a pure linebacker, a normal guy in the box most of the time will detach if he's got some guys, but just, you know, the classic type of linebacker. And, you know, John McNeil, Alex Bertrando, some of those guys have done a good job there, you know, Danny DiCarlo and all those guys. Uh, the Sam spot is the spot that we're really struggling to find. That's an important cog for us because it's almost like a safety spot. Uh, at the last couple stops that I've been at, we haven't had, a, you know, a guy that's been over 215 anywhere. You know, they're usually little guys played safety in high school or played safety in college and you move them there uh, to be able to make plays in space and we've done some of that you know I mean Brian Lang's been down there uh, sorry Brian Lane uh, you know we moved Gabe Lee from strong safety down there too and Burton DeConing's a guy that you know has that spot and he's been battling with those guys you know he's still a traditional bigger type of kid but he's doing a good job because he's so athletic um, and the secondary uh, you know, secondary, it, it, you know, when you get guys back there, it's all the bonus. You know, you need, usually need to take your best person and put them at strong safety. Uh, we, we've mo made a couple position moves. We didn't have anybody coming back, which, you know, is a blessing and a curse all at the same time. I mean, Charles Garrett came back, and he was our best guy, most experienced, and, you know, put him in a strong safety spot, see how it'll work. Maybe he'll play corner, maybe he'll be strong safety. We'll kind of see how that experiment goes. Um, you know, we had... Marcus Smith, who's got some reps, you know, in games and, and played pretty well, and he's having a great spring for us at one corner, and uh, Evan Favors, you know, and then we, you know, move Randy Uzoma to corner, and, and Lonnie Jackson's been playing. You know, we have some guys back there that's a big mix, and we're trying to find the right combination of people, and, you know, during spring ball, it is an experiment. You know, you got to figure out, okay, is Brian Lane a strong safety, or is he a, is he a Sam linebacker? Uh, they're very similar in what we do, so we just got to figure out where he best fits. Is Charles Garrett a corner or strong safety? And 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 those and those spots are really important to us. I mean, if you look at the the tradition, you know, the strong safety at Tampa was John Lynch. I mean, he'll probably be a Hall of Famer. The the Will linebackers, Derek Brooks. You know, the three techniques, Warren Sapp. They're all named guys that you know. You know, you got Booger McFarland and and uh, oh geez, now I'm blanking out. You got Bob Sanders. Uh, you know, at strong safety. I mean. You have some guys that have played there that are named guys that even if, you know, these guys nowadays don't remember the old Tampa defense and where it comes from, they still know the names of the guys who played those positions, you know, so those are very important to our defense. Okay. And going through the spring ball and you've been able to see these guys at different spots, it kind of gives you as you go into the offseason some time to evaluate where you like each one of them. And, and then some of the new guys coming in, you have some key players coming in from this recruiting class and an Ian Seau and a Matthew Lyons and some guys that you're going to expect to contribute a little bit. Uh, how important will this offseason be to kind of look back at the tape and project going into fall camp? You know, spring ball is always one of the most important times. Really, that's where you train your guys. And that's generally coming out of spring ball, you know who your team is. Now, going into fall camp, we will still have a couple question marks. Yeah, would we like uh, Ian Seau and, and Dupree uh, to come in and say, hey, we're going to rush the passer? Yeah, we need those guys. You know, you need a guy like Sunberg to come in and plug them in. It, it'll be interesting when those guys show up. You know, we have some corners. We have some great corners coming in, and uh, we feel really good about those guys. But, you know, like everywhere else in America, you know, you don't put those guys in the camp in the, with the one sometimes, mix them in, you know, even if they don't totally know what they're doing, just to see how they can play hey, is this guy ready to play at this level? And some of those guys will be ready and some of them guys won't. And then, you know, they, they, they separate themselves. The guys who can play, let's move them up. You know, we got some good athletes. Let's keep getting them reps. The guys who can't and, and can't understand the college game, well, okay, let's think about redshirt and those guys. But they'll separate themselves out. And, and, and with that influx of guys coming in, it adds a new you know, comp level of competition. You, sometimes it's good for the guys on the team to see guys who – 
you know, aren't here yet. And the thought of them just keeps them getting better, you know, and then when they show up, oh, now I got to really push. And, and if you get that at all those different spots, you know, you want to create as much competition in it within the position, within each position group, within the team that you can, because that's what makes you better. Let's talk a little bit off the field. Uh, I've had a few months to kind of get, get to know the Northern Nevada community in the area. What are your thoughts on Reno? What are your thoughts on Northern Nevada and this community that you're calling home now? You know, I, I love it. Uh, the family's been here for, I'm trying to think, it's been about a month and a half and we don't found a great school for the girls to go to, you know, with the four kids. I have two that aren't in school yet, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful area. You know, I. Uh, I had a chance to do the downtown thing for a while before my, my uh, wife and kids got here, so I lived downtown, and that was fun. It's a, it's a great atmosphere for, uh, well, you know, vacations, whatever. I mean, it's, it's where people can go and, and, and do whatever they need to do all night, and it's kind of fun. Uh, but it also has the feel of, hey, it is a small town. You know, there's the reason why they say it's the biggest small town in the world, because it, it is. I mean, we live just south of, you know, campus, and, and we love it. And, you know, we have big streets, backyard. Kids can play outside. It's... It's trusting, it's a wonderful area, and you know, you can fish and hunt, you can play golf, you can go skiing on the same day if you want to. And, and uh, I'm originally from Denver, so it, it feels a lot like home, you know, being in the mountains and uh, maybe in the temperate everything. Okay. I appreciate you joining us today, Coach, and best of luck in the offseason. Thank you.